start out reading the Amplified Bible. We did that the last time, and people seem to like it. So I'm going to do that again. We're going to read 10 verses from the 28th chapter. I don't know whether we'll get that far or not, but we're going to aim at that. We're going to talk about a barbarians, a bunch of barbarians, a barbarous people, barbarians. But it seems like these barbarians have a lot more in common with God than the righteous Jews. And we're going to run into that here in a few moments. After we were safe on the island, we knew and recognized that it was called Malta. Now Paul's ministry on Malta is a very important ministry. He really reaches the people that were not reached before. And it said in the Navy and the natives, the barbarians, uh, the word barbarian there means uh, people that doesn't that don't speak the same language as you do. They're called heathens or uh, their speech sounded like a babbling ba 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 like that. That's where the word barbarian comes from, barbarioi. And the natives showed us unusual and remarkable kindness. For they kindled a fire and welcomed and received us since it had begun to rain and it was very grievously cold. Now this is the winter time, remember. Now Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and he was laying them on the fire. When a viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself onto his hand, his arm actually. And when the Navy saw, when the barbarians saw the little animal clinging, the beast clinging from his hand, they said to one another, Undoubtedly, this man is a murderer. For though he has been saved from the sea, from the great storm at sea, justice, the goddess, avenging, has not permitted that he should live. Then Paul simply shook off, shook off the small creature, the beast actually is the therion, into the fire and suffered no ill effects, no, not whatsoever. Now their total attitude changes. However, they were waiting, expecting him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had watched him for a long time and saw that nothing fatal or harmful had come to him, they changed their minds and kept on saying over and over again, This is a God. This man's a God. In the vicinity of that place there were, were estates belonging to the head man of the island named Publius. I'll get there in a moment. Get this, get this page turned accepted and welcomed and entertained us with heavy and hearty hospitality for three days. And it happened that the father of Pilius was sick in bed with recurring attacks of fever and dysentery, and Paul went to see him, and after praying and laying hands upon him, he healed him. After this had occurred, the other people on the island who had weaknesses and diseases also kept on coming and they kept on being cured and they showed us every respect and presented us many gifts honoring us with many honors and when we sailed they provided and put on board of our ship everything that we needed barbarians huh Barbarians. Good barbarians. Now, let's look here. We're in lesson number 104. 
Kai disostenites tote epi nomen pote melite he nosos kalete. And having been saved from the storm, that's what it says here, having been saved from the storm, thoroughly saved, then, a little old adverb of time, we found out and we understood that Melita is this island that she is called. Now it says here, Hoi te bara boi, perikon uk te tukusan philanthropion, amen, absantes gar piron prosella bonto, ponte simas diaton tieton ton ephis tota. Kai dia ko sekos. And the ones barbarians. Barbarioi. Uh, that means uh, uncivilized, uh, uneducated, uh, because their speech sounded like babbling to these others. They were the babblers. And they kept on showing us outside of extraordinary kindnesses. Now this word philanthropion, philanthropion, that's where we get a word for philanthropy from. And it means to have a love toward mankind. These people were real human beings. To us, and having lit a fire, they welcomed all of us because the rain is having come down and because of it is bitterly cold. And here we go to the snake, the Mahash. See strips on taste day to polo. Frig gano T Plato's Kai Epithento. Epitane Piran, Exidna Apotes Thermes, Exel Thusen, Cothamen, Pace, Keres Alto. Now here we have a word, C Strepsantos. C Strepsantos. This word here means twist together. This means to twist together, and, and maybe he took a, uh, a small piece of twine or a twig or something or some type of a vine and wrapped these uh, bundles of, of sticks up. And the Paul, he uh, collected together a bunch of sticks of a certain, uh, well, it's a big bundle. And having put it upon the fire, the piron, this is where we get the word pyre from. Pyre, a pyre is a funeral, funeral pyre where they pile up sticks and, and uh, wood around uh, somebody when they would cremate them in times past. That's what we get the word uh, pyre from, piron. And then there was a viper, exedra, exedra. This viper is a very poisonous snake. Now Jesus and John the Baptist both called the Pharisees and the Sadducees vipers, didn't they? Very poisonous, venomous snake. And this poisonous, venomous snake from the heat. Now when they threw the, this is cold winter time, and this snake is probably laying in this, in this bundle of, of uh, uh, sticks and things around there, and he picks this, the bundle up and in the bundle is a viper. And they say that one of these vipers here will latch on you and just chew on you and just push the poison into you. And maybe this was the type of viper. A rattlesnake is a viper, a pit viper. Mm -hmm. 
and this was a viper of some sort. But they say that there's a certain uh, species of, of snakes at this time on this island. Now today, they say there aren't any snakes there at all. But it would latch onto you, sink its fangs into you, and just chew and chew and chew, working the poison. Well, this viper came out, and it fastened upon him, Kathaxman, Kathaxman, it fastened upon him. This word here, by the way, is only, it means to fall upon. Its lips and jaws fell upon Paul. And this word is only used one time in the New Testament, by the way. The hand, and the word keros there, means the whole, anywhere around here, down from your elbow on down. The hand of him, or the arm of him. And 28, verse 4 now. Now this here is a miracle of God. Now in, Ma in Mark the 16th chapter, which actually isn't there in the original language, it talks about uh, snakes will bite people and they won't, uh, uh, and it'll just, you know, it won't have any effect upon them at all. And we have the snake handling so-called Christian uh, cult also now because of that. It's not what it's called in Mark 16th chapter there, that part of it isn't in the original language. But where it was put in there later on by a different writer, it took this very episode right here, this event in Paul's life, and adapted it to the, the last got part of the Gospel of Mark, which ends at verse number 9. Post de Adon, ho barberoi, pre mamenon, to therion, Ek teis keros alto pros alelonos elegon pontos phonios phonius that is esten ho anthropos pitos hon diasostente ek teis talases he dike zain uk iasu But when they saw, that little word host there is a, a little adverb of time, page 444 in the, in the analytical lexicon. It matter of fact, that word has got a lot of different meanings. But right here it's when, it's like an adverb of time. And they saw for themselves, this word ora, ora, ora there, that means to see like on a, uh, uh, with your eyes. The foreigners, uh, Cremonmenon. That's accusative, singular, neuter, present, participle, middle voice. And this here beast, this here therion, this little uh, beast, this little serpent, the beast is hanging on to the arm of him. And toward one another, they kept on saying, to be sure, always to be sure, this is a, he is a murderous man. A phonios, he's a murderer. And this man, this one, whom having been saved out of the sea, hey decay, zain. Hey decay, zain. This hey decay there, it means the justice. But it means more than this. Justitia is the Latin word justitia. And this here, hey decay, is a goddess. It's a goddess. Now the goddess of justice, these people had, uh, well the Greeks had, had were worshiping a idol called hey decay. And hey decay, it was like karma. If you did something wrong, be sure that karma was going to catch up with you. And this word here, decay, means justice. The goddess of justice will make sure that you are punished. So they're talking about a goddess, the goddess of justice. He said he's been saved out of sea, but the goddess of justice will not suffer him, allow him to be saved.
Verse number five now. Ko man un apotinopsis to therion es to pier epothane uthane akakon. And indeed, therefore, having shook off the beast unto the fire, he suffered. Now, this word here has come from Posco. He didn't, he had no ill effects at all. Uthain, not one ill effect, not one bad effect, no harm whatsoever had come to him because of this. Now they totally changed their mind. Hoi de prosidokon, auton melane, pimp pra se, a tara pitain, opno necron epi, poli de auton prosdokon tone, kai theron tone, maidane, autopon, Ace, Alton, Genomenon, Metabolomenoi, Elegon, Alton, Ana, Theon. But these Babylon, this, the, these uh, barbarians, they kept on expecting him about to uh, swell up. Now this is a medical term, it's only used one time in the New Testament, and it is something that uh, uh, Luke, the uh, physician, the uh, expert witness, the physicist, he was a, a great scientist of his time. Now this word, pimp prase, it comes from pimp preme, and it means to uh, a great inflammation. It means heat and burning. It means an acute local infection or inflammation. Now, if you've ever been bit by a, a hornet or a wasp or a bee, you have immediate sensation of a great burning. It burns like fire. Now, scorpions are the same way. And they expected him to swell up, that, that they would see some physical signs of a great calamity happening to his arm. Or that he would fall down suddenly, look at those caught up pectain, that he would fall down suddenly, off no, dead. But they kept on expecting this. They were struck out of their senses and understanding because they didn't understand why Paul didn't fall down and die. And it said, and beholding nothing amiss. Ah, topo. Nothing amiss happened unto him. That word ace there is out tone. That extension or limitation or thought or verbal action that little ace really works well right here. Nothing happened to him in any way. Nothing was happening to him. For itself, too, that word happening there is genomenon, and that's accusing singular mask in present, participle, and middle voice. That snake's venom should have done something. But nothing amiss is happening to him. And then it says metabolomenoi, and now, they were casting together their thoughts. That's what it literally says. Casting together their thoughts. They were saying, did you see that? Did that did, was that really a snake on his arm? How come he's not dead? What's going on here? This, this is not normal. I mean, the goddess of uh, uh, decay, hey decay, uh, we thought that she was, taking care of karma right here, that this man was a murderer, but nothing's going on. Is this man a human? And they kept on saying that he might be a god. This man is to be a god. Now, in Lystra, 
When Paul healed people there, remember what they called him? They called him Mercury. Mercury was a god, you know, the, the, the wings. But uh, they were pretty fickle in Acts 14 and 11, weren't they? One moment he was considered a god, and the next moment they stoned him to death. Now, they kept on saying that he's a god. Now let's look here at verse number 7. And they toys peri ton topo. He came on. He per came. Korea. Ko. Proto. Tes. Neso. Onomate. Poplio. Pos. Anadexomenos. Himas. Tres. Himeros. Philon. Fronel. Philon. Philo. Fronos. Exe. Nisan. This is a very very important verse also. Now we find out that there's a there's a very important man here. Over in the part concerning the place, this, or that place, there kept on being a, an estate, lands, a landed estate, to the first man, to the head or to the ruler of the area, of the island, and his name was Publius. And that word means primate. Uh, it comes from Populius, Publius, or Populus, and it is not of a, a common use. It's used three times in the New Testament, by the way. This very important titled man, he's a titled man. Poplio, who hosts, who having welcomed Anadex Ominos, nominative singular masculine, first terrorist participle, middle voice, middle voice, he was very happy to welcome them for three days. And then we have another word here, Philophronos, Philophronos. That word philo, that means the like. And the, and the word uh, uh, phronos comes from the word may, frame. And that is a, a, a state of mind. Now this man is in a friendly, he's friendly minded or he's in a friendly state of mind. And he lodged us. He gave us hospitality. And he lodged us. Then in verse number 8, again to de tom patera to Poplio, Piretois, Kai, Dysenterio, Dysenterio, Sin Echo Manon, Kala K. Face, they, Pros, Hon, Ho, Paulos, XL, Thon, Kai, Pros, Zut, Salmonos, Epithes, Tos, Keras, Auto, Iasato, Auto. Moreover, the father of Publius, he became for himself, middle boys, having a Thracian fevers, a fever that would come and go, a fever that would come and go. And the word dysenterio. Now, our word dysentery comes right out of this. And by the way, Donald, Grigor, I know, I know you're listening to this. The Greek grammars that are written by the Germans, they always use the epsilon as a upsilon. This does not say deus centerio. This is dysenterium. The word epsilon is like a Y. And the word D-Y-S, dysentery. Dysentery. Now, dysentery, now, the King James calls it a, a bloody flux. What this man has is colitis. He could have amoebic dysentery. Now, I had that over there in the Middle East myself, so I know what that is. And your guts will bleed and, and, and just, uh, it is a horrible thing. It, it, it'll, for, you'll just have dysentery, something terrible, 
everything in the, you, you think your whole body is, is going out of you. It's just black and terrible, bloody and everything. And then you'll get a little better and then a year it'll come again. And it'll keep on coming until you get medication. They didn't have antibiotics back then and things that we have today. I got dysentery from uh, Damascus, Syria, in Damascus, Syria. When I got to the Amman, Jordan, I was sick with this dysentery. Terrible vomiting and diarrhea. And I'm sure that this man would vom have vomiting and diarrhea both. And we get the word dysenterio, and that is a medical term, by the way, and it's only used one time in the New Testament. Now, Timothy might have had this. One of the things that they used to cure this dysentery was alcohol. When I went over there, I was sick. I lost like 30 or 40 pounds and nothing flat with this dysentery. Brother I.K. Cross, he uh, came up to me with a bottle of wine. He said, Brother Jim, I know that you don't drink, but he said, drink this bottle of wine, drink it all. He said, I know you're hardly eating or anything. That dysentery, and the doctor gave you medication and everything, but if you'll drink this wine, it'll kill that bug. And you'll be all right. Just don't eat anything. Just drink that wine. So I did. And in days, I started becoming a little more well. A little more sound. That was a horrible experience. Now, the father of Publius, this uh, renowned uh, leader here, this uh, judge and jury and... Uh, and the local head uh, chief of the valley, or the, of the island, he's got a father-in-law that's got dysentery, and he's continuously suffering from it. That word, senecomenon, it comes from sena echo, and this thing has got him. This disease has got him, and it says here, acute the singular masculine, present participle passive. It's working on him. The passive voice there means something's and this is continuous. And it's been continuous for no telling how long. And he's laying down. It's causing him to lay down continually. And toward whom Paul, be Paul, having entered, and having prayed, and having placed his hands upon him, he cured him. That word iasako there, it means to cure. He cured him for himself. Now, according to 1 Corinthians, that the apostles would have the uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. Let's look there for a moment. 1 Corinthians 12 and 9. If I can find it. It's talking about the gifts that were in the church that the apostles had. And the gifts, the purpose of the gifts were for what? To prove that these people were mouthpieces of God and the, and the scriptures that they were receiving were valid. The reason for gifts is to confirm the word of God and confirm the ministry of these apostles. The one is given in and through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak in languages, messages of wisdom to one another, and how to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit, and to one another, and to another, is a, a wonder-working faith. By the same Holy Spirit, to another, the extraordinary powers of healing by this one Spirit. Extraordinary powers of healing. So the Holy Spirit was healing these people. And guess what happened? They believed. Not only did they believe, but they understood what was going on here was a message from God. This man wasn't a God. He was a messenger of God. He kept on lying down and Paul placed his hands upon him with a gift of healings. And he healed him. Now let's see what happens in 9 and 10. Tuto de genomeno, kai hoi loipoi hoi ante niso, 
er contes est neos pros er conto kai ethera tu on to. Ethera pe pe on to. But this one, having happened also to the ones to the to the ones remaining around us, of the in the island. And they had, uh, and they kept on having ailments, ostenia, that were they're sick. There's a lot of people sick around here, maybe with dysentery, with all kinds of stuff. And they uh, came up, and Paul, they kept on being healed by Paul. Third person throw and perfect and dignity passage. They kept on being healed by the power of God. Now look at verse number 10. Hoi kai pales, timais, eni meisason, or eni meisson that is, himos kai anagomenois, epithento, ha pros tos kera, kreia. And also, hoi kai pales, timais. Now this is a, is a term, and this is used very sparingly in Greek culture, but what it means here, and also with many honors. Now this word here, palais timais, it comes from timeo, and the word Timothy comes from that word. It means payment for a professional service. In many places, in, in uh, what we call profane Greek, it means payment for a professional service. Now the Apostle Paul, I'm sure, didn't say, hey, you owe me. He didn't put out in the mail and send out prayer cloths or anything else and, and want money or anything for this, but he healed these people so that they'd know that he had the power of God. First of all, they saw the, the viper latch onto his arm and it didn't hurt him. And then he heals Publius' father-in-law that is sick with uh, uh, amoeba, dysentery, colitis, diverticulitis or something, or... or some type of colon inflammation. And he's healed. And now they're going to honor him. They're going to honor him. He honor us. And it says when they uh, they put their needs in the boat. When they were sent out to sea, they had everything they needed. They had food, they had clothing, they had all the necessities of life there provided by these people. These people believed. And they put their money where the mouth was. Where the mouth is. They did. They helped Paul. And just look and see what God did in this wonderful little episode in Paul's life, this miraculous ministry of Paul. The real reason for the gift of healings was that these people on this island would become believers. They were barbarians, but now they were saved barbarians. They had come to know the great God of heaven. I pray out there, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will ask Him to save your soul. We don't have the gift of miracles today, but we have evidence of what happened with those. And when you believe the Word of God, God will save your soul today just like He saved these people's souls back then. By grace. And by the love and care and the grace of God and the gift of God. Father, please use this message to honor and glorify your Son and yourself. And may it reach souls all over the world for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray.